Native Lane Pod is a production of iHeartRadio in partnership with Reason to Choice Media. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome home to the native, landing on a podcast space, that's for greatness. 60 minutes is so hit, not too long for the grave shit. High level combo politics in a way that you can taste it, then digest it. Politics touches you even if you don't touch it, so get invested. Cross the T's and dot the I's, kill them back to get them, stand on business with Rye. You could have been anywhere, but you chose us. Native Land Podcast, the brand that you can trust. What's up, what's up, everybody? This is episode 18, 18 of Native Land Pod, where we give you our best breakdown of what's going on in the world, both politics and culture. Y'all, 18, do you know in dog years, we will be 88, the same number of indictments Trump is still facing. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I Very didn't know clever. That, I'm man. just like saying. It. I'm just saying. Good. We're 18 job, years brother. old, and in uh, human years, we'd be able to vote, y'all. Vote, vote, vote. This is Andrew Gilliman. I'm joined by two amazing, brilliant women, talented in every way. Miss oh. Angela Rye, Miss Tiffany Cross. And of course, we want to give an amazing outreach hug, virtual and otherwise, to all of our listeners. Thank you for continuing to listen, to rate, to review, and to recommend the podcast to all of your loved ones, friends, maybe even some of the enemies, you know, they could stand to be enlightened too. Frenemies. Uh, Please continue, continue to support us just as we will be here on the front lines to support you. On today's episode, we're going to start off with a quick update on the Trump trial, focusing on classified documents. The case has been kicked and you'll hear more about where it's being kicked to in today's rundown. And the Hush Money case, a very, very important witness, took the stand this week. The woman at the center of this controversy Stormy Daniels, and we'll talk to you about what did and did not happen in the courtroom. Then we'll swing around and give you some thoughts on Bernie Sanders and what he's got to say to young voters about the threat of Trump. Speaking of messaging for elected officials, New York Governor Kathy Hochul found herself in some hot water. Uh, I'd love to hear what y'all thought about what she had to say. And if you don't know, stay tuned because we'll tell you. She received some backlash and we'll talk about whether or not It's fair in today's world or not. And we're also going to get into, actually, I'm going to redo that because I was trying to connect to one thing and I don't need to connect it. You just want me to talk about herpes. What? (laughs) Just that paragraph. No, I thought you said you just want me to talk about herpes. (laughs) I was about to say, I don't know where that came from. I'll redo herpes. No, no, you did it. You did it fine. You got, okay, cool. But she's not the only one who is making mm, just some untimely comments. We're going to talk about a situation that has developed at University of Mississippi involving a congressman, a U.S. senator, and a student who is or maybe is not still a member of the student body in a certain fraternity. And in politics are everywhere. We're going to take a special look at the infamous Drake rap beef with Kendrick Lamar. Well, I know, but we're about to name three people. Who was the third one? Well, you know, the controversy has gone back and forth between... Drake and Kendrick. Only? Yes. That's all that matters. Rick Ross and everybody else to fell off. Oh, well, who was okay. the third one right, that you fine, were going to name? He's talking about Jesus, I guess. Hey, Who are we? I mean, okay. I'm just saying. Right. I think that Andrew is pu- pu- pushing out misinformation. Why, why are you doing that, Andrew? <laughs> Y'all. Before you, you be careful because they will drop a diss track on you so fast. I, you know what? I welcome Before it. I welcome it. I welcome it. Just don't ride down my street shooting at nothing. Oh, okay. Anyway, do stay, Kendrick, stay tuned we're not for blaming more you, Kendrick. of we're not that blaming you, Kendrick. a little bit later. And in politics, are everywhere, y'all. Not only are we gonna get down to the beef, but we're also gonna talk a little bit about maybe a larger cultural moment that we might be in with this uh, dispute. This is gonna be a good episode. Stay with us. Getting on to Trump justice. Y'all, I told you. That's definitely her piece. <laughs> Getting on to Trump, Trump just us. Trump justice is an oxymoron. Yeah, we can't say any of these words right today. That's why it's Trump justice. Yes. Because it ain't the justice that applies to everybody else. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Understand. It's, Trump it's justice. We're on to Trump justice. And I okay. predicted a couple of weeks ago in our conversation uh, and giving an update about the trial uh, being taken, taking place in New York that... Donald Trump was in some way going to be able to escape accountability Mm -hmm. here. And it seems like 
Um, we've known all along much of the game for the Trump legal team has been kick the can down the road, delay, 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 delay until after the election, which, of course, the plan will then be for him to be able to summarily uh, have his Justice Department dismiss any cases that the Justice Department has not yet been able to prosecute against him. And in a move yesterday, I'm sorry, earlier this week, um, the judge who is overseeing the documents, you all remember those, uh, uh, the raid and the taking out of boxes of documents yeah. that Trump tried to conceal. Well, Judge Eileen Cannon has indefinitely mm-hmm. postponed uh, a trial date uh, here, Honor. which um, um, I think could have been predictable. But y'all, I think Trump, Trump is winning on so many levels as it relates to these cases because we also learned this week that in Georgia. That's predictable. I'll keep going. In Georgia, we just saw the district attorney and Trump's legal team successfully will now have her remaining on the case appealed. Um, the appellate Bonnie, court did yeah. accept. Well, you're talking so about Trump's attorneys. I'm, so it hasn't happened yet. They're trying. They're holding a hearing. They have, to, they're continuing their efforts to get Fonnie Willis disqualified. Correct. From pursuing the case. But this is a significant move. Right. The the the, the appellate court, court, court yeah. did not have to take up and review um, um, the judge's previous decision here. It's Georgia. But this is a federal case the, with significant. This is no, a state case uh, involving Fulton County. Case. Fulton County. It's a state-based uh, uh, mm-hmm. case. Um, and quite frankly, to me, this was one of the more important ones because should he be found accountable, should he be found guilty, yeah. he would have had to presumably serve whatever the sentence was that were, what was rendered by a jury um, uh, and a judge in, 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 in Georgia. Um, in the federal cases, should he become president again, the Justice Department can dismiss them, right? But, but- Summarily. I still want to know why you think it was um, predictable that the classified documents case would be suspended indefinitely. I thought indefinitely, it, uh, what I thought would happen was that we would not get to a trial before the election. And the judge's oh, actions up to this point are in furtherance of that. Yeah. Without any real justification as to yeah. why. Yeah. Right? But I think the indefinite part is, well, to me, it was mind blowing. Like postpone indefinitely. For sure. Um, so, yeah, I just, I don't know. And then with the Fonnie Willis, um, Fulton County uh, District Attorney Fonnie Willis being removed from the case. Yeah. The fact that that's being heard in Georgia, I'm saying in Georgia, it's not surprising to me because even the state legislature took up a, a whole, like their own ethics whole hearing package. Yeah, yeah, for sure. on whether or not um, she violated ethics rules significant enough for her to be removed from Correct. the case. So they've this they've made Trump's being on trial with the 19 co-defendants about her being on for trial, sure. which we've talked about at nauseum, even about her personal relationship and whether or not she financially benefited from um, a, a specially appointed uh, prosecutor on that case. I think what what I feel like I hear you saying is that his justice um, does cut corners in ways that most of us, whether black, white or anything in between, would never, could never. With, without a doubt. You know. Without a doubt. And, and yeah. in most cases, a judge will set a date and will leave it to the parties to fight between themselves about whether or not they want to push the date back. The prosecution and the defense could agree that we'd like to uh, move the day to trial. In this yeah. case, she's doing all of the heavy lifting for his team. Yeah. All of it, um, including with regard uh, to what special documents uh, Trump is is required to show the prosecution that his team is going to argue in court. She's she's she she this judge Eileen Cannon has been overturned repeatedly at the appellate level. And in many cases, cut down levels. Um, and you'd think that she was undeserving of not only a law degree, Uh-oh. but certainly being uh, seated at a federal bench. My whole point to this, um, ladies, I'd love to hear you know your thoughts. I know you, Tiffany, as well, is, is will it ever come to pass that Trump will stand um, in account and have to be held account for, 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 for what's happened here? Um, mm-hmm. I, I'll keep my thoughts very brief. This is my, you know, I, I, I know how you feel about it. Um, I, 
I, I don't know because I, I think as, you know, people who look like us, it's hard for us to put any faith in this justice system. Yeah. So I think the focus on everybody, instead of like watching the media pour over this circus, um, everybody should focus on voting and making sure like down ticket, everything, make sure yeah. that it doesn't make a decisive victory. So he is not in office. Um, I think we haven't learned our lesson since 2016. Mm -hmm. In 2016, it was wall to wall blanketed coverage of Trump, 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 where even to like just subconsciously people were just addicted to hearing about him. Yeah. I don't think the cable news ratings boom will be the same that it was that long ago, but it just still feels like we haven't learned our lesson from it. We are ignoring actual policy issues that will impact the election to give this man the free press that he so desires. He's so yeah. crazy. Like he loves that he's the center of attention. Um, so to, to your question about him having any accountability here, um, no, I, I, you know, but also that's also not my, my passion point of it. Yeah. You know, I don't really care what happens to him. Um, I'm more concerned about the, tr the country being turned over to him. Yeah. I just want to say one thing that I think is worth noting for the listeners who may not be paying close attention to this, but Eileen Cannon was appointed Correct. to this role by Donald Trump in 2020. Right. So I think that this is, you know, this isn't about like going at them for any nefarious behavior. I think that this part is about demonstrating to people why it's so important to vote and get people in office who support your ideals about what justice actually looks like because it can be very e easily prejudiced by someone who believes and upholds the like the the tenets of democracy and morality that Donald Trump does. Yeah, so it's no wondering yeah. wonder that she would uh, suspend it indefinitely. I definitely think it's going to get appealed. Yeah. yeah. So so what I because I, I, I know where we are and, and, and actually listeners um, stay tuned because we'll we'll be having a deeper dive conversation on what kinds of topics we decide to platform here on this platform. And part of part of what I think that's not in this show. sir. As, no, no, no. <laughs> but but I want to tease it to let folks yeah, know that oh, this like is an that. important Sorry. conversation that we engage in all, all the of time. the time. Yeah. But, Tiff is mad but, right now. We talk well, about one of the things that I said to Tiffany when we walked we in the door this morning was. We can't start treating this stuff like it's like normal. Normalized. Yeah, you do say That's that. This right. is big. This is big stuff. And the moment we decide to be like, oh, it's just Trump for Trump's sake, I think begins the erosion the numbing. of all of the democratic structures that I think all of us believe ought to be upheld and improved upon. And in his case, he wants to see dismantled. But but but. Do you want to play his clip or are you tired of him? Nah, we don't need his clip. Okay. I, I, I'll just say this. The reason why I think. I take your point, Tiffany, around the fact that nobody's going to save us in this election. We keep thinking it might be the trials. It might be the judges. It might be the Supreme Court. Yeah. And I think what your comments caused me to think about was if anybody's out there thinking that he's going to get caught in one of these cycles, one of the webs that he's spawned. Right. And, and God knows he deserves to be caught in them. Count it. Count it. No. Count it. Count it. Count it zero. Count it unimportant to what will happen in November. Assume that the people who are for him will be for him today as they will be come Election Day and that the people who are against him are going to be those same individuals and that mm -hmm. the person who wins, the side, the philosophy, the belief system that who wins will be the one who gets that one more vote in that critical place. That's going to be essential to the outcome of what happens. Five thirty five thirty seven. Right. I always remember that number in Florida, 537 votes and a five four decision at the Supreme Court made uh, George Bush president uh -huh. of the United States. Right. right. So the, the, at the season of hanging Chad, come if on, you're old enough the to dimple. But can all I just, I'll say so quickly, forth. Andrew, it's not um, even a matter of covering. I understand the um, gravity of the situation of very clearly. I think it, he's not covered responsibly or not um, informationally even. Yes. Uh, if you want to sit and, you know, <clears throat> express your outrage. Yeah, we all feel that way. Yeah. Like I personally, when I watch, I, I can't even stomach it for more than 10 minutes at a time. But when I watch and people are there just opining, yeah. you know, and this is what's going to happen. It's like, I 
personally don't really care about your opinion. Mm. I haven't learned anything from what you said. Yeah. All I saw was your outrage. Yeah. And who cares? To me, if you're talking about this trial, to Angela's point that she just talked about the judge, that is somebody out there did not know this was a, a Trump appointed judge. Right. Perhaps the media could say, while we're on that subject, yeah. Donald Trump appointed over 200 mostly white men to lifetime appointments, appointments on the bench. Let's talk about that instead of sitting like idiots outside this courtroom pontificating about what they think is happening, what could happen. That does very little to inform the American body politic or to move the needle. What it does is let me dangle some candy yeah. in front of uh, perhaps less intellectually curious people for them to sit like vegetables and consume this reality TV media circus. Yeah. And I, I'm just disgusted at that. And I don't want to participate in that part of it. I feel you. Um, it's one of the reasons why I sort of leapfrog over all of the sensationalism of, of, of Stormy Daniels is testimony because in 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 totality it has absolutely nothing uh, nothing was revealed yesterday that speaks to the counts the three felony counts that are being charged against Donald Trump um, but sensational it was speaking of Donald Trump and we'll close this segment out with this Bernie Sanders had something to say to young people about this moment that we now find ourselves and obviously Bernie Sanders uh, th this is made more remarkable because young people were with him in spades both times uh, he, he pursued uh, the White House in the Democratic primary. And at this point, by, uh, um, um, uh, Senator Sanders is concerned enough about what's happening on college campuses and how young people might be making decisions about how they're going to vote in November based off of uh, the conflict right now taking place um, uh, in Israel and, and, and Gaza. And I just want to read for you because we don't have, uh, this was a sit down interview, a, a, a written interview, and we don't have a good sound from it. But Sanders' comments were this, we can be extremely upset at Biden's administration for their policies with regard to Israel and Gaza. But the difficulty is that in the real world that you live in, speaking to students, you've oft you've often to take uh, you, you're off to take a look at a whole lot of things. On the other hand, I would hope that most young people and protesters do not want to see Donald Trump, who is a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, who doesn't acknowledge the reality of climate change, become president of the United States of America. I felt like this was strong language coming from Bernie to say you've got to you've got to take the responsible um, uh, uh, look. He says you have to have a certain maturity when you deal with politics. And that is, yes, you can disagree with somebody. That doesn't mean you can vote for somebody else who could be the most dangerous person in American history or not vote and allow that other guy to get in. Right. So I, I'd be interested to know whether or not you all feel struck or that you feel Bernie Sanders can still persuade students um, and young people who were so faithful to him so many times electorally by coming at them and basically saying, look, we've got to be mature about this, that you may disagree on this issue and I feel you on it, but don't let the enemy, you know, don't let the good be the perfect. Don't don't let it, good it, be the perfect, uh, the, be the enemy let, of the perfect. Don't let good be the enemy of the perfect. The enemy, don't let the enemy be the perfect, perfect of the good. <laughs> Don't okay. don't let perfect be, be the, the enemy, enemy of, of the good. good. Yeah, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I screwed that one up. Well, well, you know, it's always up to her piece. But exactly. I will say <laughs> that, you know, um, I think Bernie Sanders supporters from the last two elections have gotten a little older. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he has the same resonance with this new group of young people. It doesn't mean that he should be silent in any way. Yeah. Um, I also think that what I would recommend, because we like calls to action in this program, yeah. but and I'm, I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but what I would say is I believe in pros and cons lists. Um, and sometimes, you know, you have to write out, here are all the things that I would get from making this decision. If yeah. I voted for Joe Biden, here are the things that... Um, are good. Here are the things that are bad. And then do the same thing for Donald Trump. And then do the same thing for if you stay at home, because if you stay at home, you can assume that the latter would win, that Donald Trump Correct. would win. So your pros and cons list for A, B, and C, B and C are likely to be identical. Yeah. When you do your math, if you say on the other end of that, Trump is my guy. Yeah. That's up to you, right? I don't see yeah. how you, your math is mathing. 
Um, but I think that it's important to give people tangible examples of what can and can't happen. And really, because these are people who've been in office, you can reflect on both of their records to determine what you will get and follow through on their promises. We talked about the time interview that was like an 80 minute read the other day. <sighs> Um, about what Trump said he was going to do. There's also a podcast that we've done on Project 2025. You should take all of those things into consideration yeah. when you're making your pros and cons list and determine how you will vote. This is not an easy election. There's not. There's no passion here or about, you know, yes, we can and change we can believe in. But we do know that there's change that will really hurt us. Yeah. Um, if we don't do what is responsible to Bernie Sanders' point. So I appreciate what he said. I don't know that he said anything that different from when he endorsed Joe Biden in 2020. Um, but I still appreciate it nonetheless. And I think we do all have an obligation when we're even fed up to make these pros and cons lists to remember what's ahead. Yeah. Um, Tiffany, I know you are a good student of, of international policy. And I think you'll be the first to remember that the first step Donald Trump took coming into office was the Muslim man. Yes. Right. Where he put together that list from Muslim countries mm -hmm. and basically said, you can't come to the United States. Mm -hmm. For those of us who are arguing on behalf of the humanity of the Palestinian people, let's we don't have to judge him only by what he projects to do if he were reelected. But we can measure him by what we already know him to have done. Mm -hmm. Not only that, the moving of the U.S. embassy. Um, and what that signaled, mm -hmm. his acknowledgement that he doesn't believe in a two-state solution. Uh, this, these, these are significant public policy positions this man is putting out there. And the difference won't even be on the same planet if you were to compare Biden's philosophy on that region of the country and on the, the humanity of the Palestinian people versus how Republicans, Trump and and others on their side talk about the Palestinians almost not giving any regard to their safety, security, the Islamophobia on college campuses to choose to come down only on one side. I just wonder whether or not you think you think that's resonant at all for young people. Would, no, would they I, I honestly I don't. I have a th an unscientific theory that when people hear Trump or see Trump, they tune out. I don't think it's this. It's just not eight years ago. You know, mm -hmm. like it is not exciting. It's not interesting to people. It's like, yeah, we've seen this car wreck yeah. 8000 mm -hmm. times. But they're willing so, to get back in the car. Uh, well, I, I, but they to your what you it. right. And to your point, you're like, but when you do that, you are making a choice. For sure. But I, I mean, I hear from people all the time, even in our comments, I hear people all the time, like we're tired of hearing about Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the. The, I, un, while I understand that, there's also danger in that. If you're tired of hearing about Trump and you're doing everything you can to get to the voting polls, okay, I got it. Yeah. If you're tired of hearing about Trump and you're telling your family members and all the people this is what needs to happen, I got it. Yeah. Then you don't, you don't have to listen. Yeah. But this idea of... Um, like, I get Bernie Sanders' point. Like, I think he's, you know, where we all are. Like, guys, but look at what he's doing. I just, I don't think people are engaged to the same extent. And it's like, you told us that last time. You yeah. said last yeah. time it was going to be the most dangerous election. Like, we got it. We don't mm -hmm. want to hear about it. We don't need to dissect over this. And it's ubiquitous. Like, you can't escape Everywhere. it even if you try. Yeah. Um, I think one of the striking things that he said this week was, the you know, conflating um, these two, you know, the the, the peaceful, mostly peaceful protests and was like, this is not like January 6th. Well, you goddamn right it's yeah, not. Yeah. January 6th, somebody yeah. died. Like It yeah. was violence. Yeah. And I think people are even, and they don't remember that, you know, yeah. because the attention span of the American electorate is like that. And they don't remember it and they've moved on. So, yeah. I don't know. We I don't know what to do about it because yeah. I hear you guys like we have to talk about it. I don't know what to do about it. But I I my unscientific theory is people hear Trump and they're like, James, yeah. I've heard about this. I can't escape it. I've seen it. It's New York Times, A1 above the fold. It's CNN all day. It's MSNBC all day. For sure, it's Fox News all day. Sure. I, I have no solution. Yeah. yeah. Well, I will say in the spirit of moving on, I, mm -hmm. Tiffany, you highlighted a couple of things, uh, categories if you fall in that you can afford to not have to, 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 to bird dog this thing every day. But I hope that and I fear that many of us are in the category that we tune out simply because of the oversaturation and the fact that. We're we are giving into what the systems exactly wants us to give into, which is this is all too complicated. It's too much going on. I just have to check out. Yeah. And that decision, which I completely understand, is a sends a different chill through me because it sets us up, it sets us up for the real okie doke which is 
nothing surprises us, nothing stuns us, nothing is out of bounds. And guys, we can look at Russia and see where that road leads. Right. We're going to take a break, pay some bills, come right back. So speaking of uh, politicians and their words mattering or not mattering, um, Governor Kathy Hochul here uh, of the state of New York, we just happened to be in New York, I said here uh, in New York, um, made some comments that raised a couple of eyebrows across uh, the state of New York and I think even the country. Y'all want to hear what she has to say. Let's take a listen. Young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word a computer is. They, they don't know. They don't know these things. And I want the world open up to all of them because when you have their di diverse voices innovating solutions through technology, then you're really addressing society's broader challenges. So you all heard um, um, uh, Governor Huckle's comments there about black kids in the Bronx not even knowing what a computer is. Um, I also just have to take note that those comments were made at the Milken Institute mm -hmm, Conference in California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the for y'all who don't know what that is, Google it, check it out, look it up. Some of the wealthy influentials, you know, uh, uh, quote unquote, the top brass of this country, a room that doesn't look like the people at all that she's talking about, by the way. Um, but I thought it was important to note that that did take place in California this week at the uh, Milken Institute uh, Conference. And 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 I, I how did it strike y'all? I know that the, the popular uh, commentary here has been, you know, really about whether or not black kids own or know what computers are. Um, and 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 uh, Governor Holcomb spoke to Hokel. Hokel, God, I, excuse me, Governor. Uh, Governor Hokel spoke to um, some dimensions of this that I think they strike at my heart. But I'd be interested to know how y'all kind of react to that. Good intent. Just misspoken. Um, um, I, I think this. So why I thought this story was interesting is because um, we encounter like that white liberal base all the time mm -hmm. yeah. who are well intentioned, but misspeak. Um, and forgive me for being ill prepared here, but there actually is data around um, children of color, yeah. students of color and their use and experience with technology. So what she said is actually ill informed. Yeah. That, that's not true. But like, of course, people. In know. other words, black black kids. I, I'm I am familiar with the same data you are, which is that black children by share of the population have among the highest penetration of technology. Yes. Of but for any of any group for different uses. Yes. But of any group. But the key point there is uh, for different uses. And so when you get into, um, you know, below the poverty line, for example, mm -hmm. most people do have a smartphone, some use of technology. Um, before smartphones were ubiquitous, there were computers in their homes, um, but they were using them for different reasons. Yeah. So it was a lot of social media right. engagement, et cetera. So it is certainly a concern. I think this idea... Um, you know, it, it, sometimes, and again, I understand her intentions, and her intention is to say, hey, we want to bring this community group along because they have something to contribute. Yeah. Um, I think the danger in that is, um, one, it's just, it's just not true. Right. It's inaccurate. Um, and two, it it's almost how people can talk about, um, like, a burn victim or an animal being cute, you know? And it's like, we want to teach you how yeah. to read and write, you know? Yeah. And it's, I don't like it, you know? Yeah. I don't, and I think that's why it's so important to have community validators and empower those folks. I would have been more interested in hearing from a community validator to yeah. talk about technology at Milken than I would from uh, Governor Hochul, um, or Holcomb, as Andrew said. <laughs> Hochul. Hochul. <laughs> Hochul. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't like her comments. I, I understand um, where she was coming from, but I thought they were um, ill-informed and, and not very well articulated. Well, I wanted to put the blame at her feet mm -hmm. um, because I think that the, the thing is there is um, – something that I just looked up that talked about um, students of color. This is from the Education Trust. Students of color and students from low-income backgrounds already have inequitable access to devices and high-speed internet. That became something that we was we talked about a lot during the COVID pandemic because mm -hmm. students of color were going right. to be remarkably disadvantaged by from online learning. Is that a computer in and of itself? No, but it has a lot to do with this. She recently um, announced 
a uh, $27 million school technology and security enhancement um, um, plan. This was just in March. And she is talking about beefing up um, infrastructure in schools, but what about going into homes? What about right. the public-private partnerships that can in- exist to not only facilitate online access, broadband access, um, which a lot of uh, New Yorkers of color don't have, and ensure that they actually have the resources they need to have computers? Yeah. So instead of like highlighting it to Tiff's point, the burn victim sure. and visiting the burn victim. Why don't you make sure you aid the burn victim? Yeah. Give him a bomb. And not even get, give give him bomb. Yeah. Poke him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not and, herpes. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so uh, <laughs> give them a bomb. What is and, happening today? And scripture, the bomb is the south. B-A-L-M. It's the south. <laughs> it, it, it is the. Tiffany, it is the I hate you. Angela's being That's inappropriate. Y'all are being I, inappropriate. And they're not going to get the underground like, meeting Yes, they are. Because we're leaving it in. This episode is going to be called Our Thoughts on Her Peace. Hush. Um, sorry, but sorry. yeah, but I'm only. Point, this is a. You see me to, say hush, right? I chose yes. that for a reason. Yes. Hush. Yes. 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 Stay tuned. Silence. We're going to get into that. Silence in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Silence Silence. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> but yes, this was a part of the Smart Schools Bond Act, and my only point is, oftentimes when you hear people pointing out a problem, and this isn't race specific. Yeah. Pointing out a problem, very rarely do we come through addressing the problem with the solution, and I think she should be held to account for that. And maybe we, I didn't hear her full remarks, so I really don't. Well, know she what did she said apologize for you know Following. what she's yes for but what I, she even said. even in that maybe she I had a solution. I don't know. I didn't hear anything after oh, I that. I just heard that clip, so maybe she did offer a solution. I didn't hear it, but even just the framing. I of don't it, know. They don't know what a computer yeah, is. Yeah, like that's a, 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 the other piece was I, I didn't like. Black kids in the Bronx. So we talk a lot of times about not looping all black folks yes. as if they are, we are a monolith, monolith into mm-hmm. one group. There are wealthy black people in the Bronx. That's right. true. There right. are children, families who own businesses, have more wealth built up and made greater contributions than we could dream yeah. of in there politics. There are also poor kids in the Bronx that but, don't want to come And there are poor and white kids the way, in the Bronx. And got it, by the way, all of, right. all of that is true. It just feels like the oppression Olympics when a lot of times in the liberal white community, these, with good intention, however, these things get thrown out, these terms get thrown out, these let's go and do good by them, get thrown out without any real understanding, definition, um, or advice from the communities you're solving for. That's what that's, the, that's the issue. Like, don't ask for yes. a white savior. Like, I, yeah. I, I, and, and stop yeah. looping. Because this is why so ma- so much of, of, of America, but very specifically white America, gets it very confused about who it is that they are encountering. I am walking toward you and you decide you're going to go to the other side of the street. You're going to clutch your bag. You're going to clutch your pearls. When I'm the one sitting in my car locking the damn car door mm-hmm. when you come around because mm-hmm. you're doing crazy things, right? So, but, but Well, the most you don't dangerous know, member of society is a Karen. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, like that Katie. causes violence uh, and problems. But, but, but or Katie. You go. <laughs> Katie nah, again. Katie's Katie Katie sitting at home like, by the way, this the is the, this is the anniversary of, of the attack on me, uh, physical by Angela. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. But, 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 but on, I, on a serious point, yeah. y'all. Andrew, I'm not going to let you herpiece me. Oh, God. On a serious <laughs> note. It will not happen today. Not, today. not on my watch. Not, yes. not on my watch. But you will you know let me get a word in, though. I'm listening. I'm listening. Right? No, but this is, this is the, the, a serious point, which is the reason why we do have to check these things is because we don't check them enough. And now it is so commonplace to refer to a group of people as a monolith without making any distinction. The blacks. The, correct. But it's sort of like your name is too difficult to pronounce, and so I'll just call you Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, it, you don't I love that. get to shortcut me. Yeah. yeah. You have to understand the nuance of who I am, where I've come from, what the struggle, the success, as well as the failures yeah. that have that have been to fully appreciate our circumstances because I wouldn't be so dumb as to go out there and say white kids in Appalachia don't know what a computer is. Right. Yeah. Precisely. I, I, I love that. And I don't know a white politician who would say in that in that same level of framing, because why they know the contours the nuance. of the well, community, the ways, they know the, the way nuance. white people like can dissect each other. You know, like the the whole framing of like poor white trash, or you know, like I've uh, heard those terms exactly. Absolutely. And we can look at um, white people as in, in terms of class. It's like you can see different, like working class white people, middle class white people, sure. upwardly mobile white people. Sure. 
white people can look at us and the black. And it's the all black. the same. The black. That's all, all the it same. is. If you're not in the projects, you one generation removed, or you know somebody who's in the project, like they literally don't. The, um, not all, not everybody, obviously, but a lot of folks. The other danger in this is presenting it like blacks are here, everyone else is here, and so young black kids, when you're listening to this, you should aspire to be like anybody else but yourself, mm. and that is a horrible thing For to sure. put in the mind of a child. For and sure. when you show up to the community with that attitude, sure. and you present that way to these children they adopt that and they're already in a community yeah. that makes the reminds them Every day. that nobody cares about you because they go to a dilapidated school they live that's in it. a red line community yeah. they have a system that's imprisoning people around them and then when somebody who looks like Hoko moves in all of a sudden it's a fucking banana republic on the corner all of a sudden it's starbucks on the corner i don't i don't like that attitude now again i don't think that's her um intention sure. but that is what perpetuates and it to your something that you said to me a while ago that i've stolen and adopted as my own, your own. it captures our imagination well, sure does. But it stops thing, us from thinking what the we can thing do. about this too is um it goes right back to following the money and so if whose failure is it if black kids or brown kids or white kids in the bronx don't have access to computers right it's not I, we should be resourcing schools sure. but we also should be resourcing families sure. we also should be making life that much easier for people in our cities in our states and i just think it is it's ir- it's remarkably irresponsible um i do appreciate that she said um that they they lack they they know what computers are, but the problem is they often lack access to the technology too, and that brings us right back to the heart yeah. of where to, we were to, at the beginning. Yeah. To the heart of the point, and also, what kind of public policy do you derive from that being the problem? Yeah, yeah. If you've diagnosed $2 the access, two billion dollars Smart Schools Bond Act. Yes, yeah. and again, if that technology then sits over the weekend and in the evenings in the schoolhouse, mm-hmm. then it still isn't bridging the gap that we know you've identified as, as existing as, as the reason for having done this. I don't, I, I don't want any of the listeners, anybody to think that what we're doing here is wordsmithing. The, the point, if, if that's what you get from it, um, or, or that we're just some grievance community, that isn't it. This is our friendly touch on the shoulder, rub on the back. We no, it's not. we have well. And, and so, is no, this is, no, this is what we let, me, I'll, let me finish mm-hmm. the point and then you can disagree. This is our gentle way of saying you may have good intention and we want you to follow through with good, not just good intention, but good policy as a result of your concern. Mm-hmm. However, okay. this is the injury that you do to us. Why do I have when to you rub perpetuate her on the head? That's what I'm saying. It's no, not no, it, gentle. It, it is, but I, I hear your firm. point, Andrew. Because I, Andrew, what I think you're saying is, don't run away from the conversation because you don't feel welcome or you feel shame. So I do understand that. But it is not our responsibility to make you comfortable correct. and to correct, to, to course correct in, in your words and what you said. And yeah. quite frankly, we have a righteous anger yeah. in how we're spoken to because the and whole about. policy, right? Because right, we were how we're in that room to, at the Milk precisely yeah. how we're spoken to and about and that that a lot of these conversations are t- to your point take place at tables where we're not there and yeah. so then you come with this white savior attitude like here's what i'm gifting you instead of the, what angela said earlier sitting in conversation with people yeah. and looking at them as your equal because guess what we are your equal yeah. whether yeah. we are in the project whether yeah. we on the corner or whether we in the corner office we are your equal we yeah. are human beings we are not a commodity around election season and if you engage us on that level yeah. then we can have a more equitable you know in some, I feel and I don't give a I, damn if they're offended by I, it I, I and feel, I don't need to tap them, them on, them on their I shoulder I feel you yeah. and, I, and I appreciate and I appreciate where you're coming from and I completely understand it for me I think I've 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 found myself in in many ways wanting to I approach it like being a translator which is yeah. I'm speaking to you all and I'm omitting certain words and even certain reactions and certain phrases because without even saying we have all deepened into the same emotion around this thing. Whereas somebody who is well-intentioned but doesn't know and hasn't done the, the work to get to know us in the way that requires their, one, curiosity, but two, their nuance, just as they would apply to themselves, I'm translating back to you in a way that I hope you can hear me. In a way, you can hear me because if you don't hear me, then you're going to course correct for the wrong thing. You're now going to wordsmith versus action change, right? Or, or, or evolution of the mind or curiosity about what you don't know and what's different from you. I, I, I just don't want the takeaway to be that these are now the line of offensive words 
that you don't cross and that you don't say and that you don't insert rather. These are the beliefs that you hold, which must be wholly dismantled because they are not based in fact and truth. One. I want to be on the dismantling and two, committee. On the on the <laughs> on, uh, uh, on, on the real, it isn't um it suggests your absence of curiosity about what you don't know, what you don't understand, and most directly about me and my people who I love. Think about and 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 do my very best to uplift every time I can. But so so that's all I'm saying is that well, it's a matter of translation. Are you going to be over the compassionate back rub committee? <laughs> I would like to be over the dismantling committee. What's right. your committee too? I would like to talk about the white supremacists. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So she'd so, like to be over the, the take down the white supremacists committee. Oh, I'm looking right. at Nick we're, over here. We're, like, we'll resolve. Yes. We're, we're going to resolve this as we all got a role to play. Mm, different roles. Andrew want to rub back. All I'm saying is what it I'm is saying. True, though, we all have to a role to play. We all got a to play that. in this thing. And I, right? Can I just say something really quickly, yeah. though, just to save Please. your mentions? I want y'all to know, Andrew, you are kind he and art, like the way that you um you're so articulate oh girl please <laughs> and so clean and articulate so clean to put He's together so clean articulate. and articulate, but articulate. I, I think if people listen to Andrew Andrew is either just as much of a G or more than a G than us when it comes to your policy and things yeah. that you stand for and things that you believe in because I think sometimes people hear you say that and they're like come on Andrew He's you effective. know He's yes effective. you are effective but you're you're no softer in the things that you want to accomplish in society especially when it comes to shade Oh, listen at that. Listen at that. Speaking yeah. of shade, it's yeah. some white supremacists to talk about. I, you get Andrew talking long enough. And I, it's what I got, lipstick on my teeth? No, it's just, yeah, you know how it I, I appreciate the back and the nature of that. What is it, white stuff in my mouth? Oh, I can't stand that. It happens That's often, what old y'all. people have. Andrew, we're so just trying to make sure know. we don't look crazy. This is what I do know. Um, the fight, y'all, the battle continues. Yeah. This time, the scene of the crime is in Mississippi, y'all. Not Mississippi. Can you spell it backwards? Yes. I can barely spell Go it. Ahead. No, backwards. I got a song for it though. Backwards? M I S S I S. That's forward. <laughs> That's forward. Backwards. Spelling. More importantly, y'all, Mike Collins, representative member of Congress, reposted and left up a video on his social media account with Yeah, you know what? I don't have to describe it. Why don't y'all take a look and listen? <laughs> So I know many of you all listen and you you uh, you may or may not go back and watch on YouTube. But what we just showed was a video of a student protest taking place at the University of Mississippi and the counter protests uh, to these um, uh, students who were gathered um, um, pro Palestinian was a I don't know. Best way to describe it is an anti Palestinian, but they were describing themselves as pro American. With American flags and dawning. What she was doing was pro American, too. Precisely. Ooh, how they dawned themselves. Say it again for the people which in is the why bank. I said how they dawned themselves. And in reality, they're facing off with a single black female, a graduate student, as you will come to learn, who was simply there expressing again their support and what she was, her support, um, or rather grievance around the way in which the, the, the war in Palestine is being executed. Um, she was met with jeers, yelling, screaming, um, Ape um, sounds. yelling. In addition to all of that, uh, on the far right of our screen, we saw a student who uh, decided he would mimic the gestures of an ape, uh, the sounds that an ape might make. Mm -mm. Um, I'm assuming to suggest, obviously, what. I've heard before, uh, Ron DeSantis, uh, Florida voters want monkey the state up by electing Andrew Gillum. How about that? We've uh, seen other instances where, you know, a former first lady was referred to as having, a, 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 as looking like a monkey. But but we talked about this, I think, I don't know if it was casually or if it was on air. We were saying, what is this a fascination, this obsession with black folks and monkeys with as it relates to some of these racists? Well, what makes this... I think a little bit interesting is that there was some swift uh, justice on the end of the university. Uh, he was kicked out of his fraternity and expelled uh, after an investigation. Um, but the member of Congress left the uh, feed up 
until receiving quite a bit of backlash. I'd love for you all to hear how the congressman decided that um, he would respond. And because we don't have his actual voice, they replied, of course, in written statement. They go real ape shit uh, when they uh, own video for Fox News, but then they send us a comment. Uh, And it reads, quote, potentially inappropriate behavior that none of us should seek to glorify when acknowledging this on social media. Frankly, I did not believe that to be the point, the focal point of the video shared at the time, Collins post on X. He also continued to praise counter protests uh, at colleges where, quote, regular students are standing up against pro Hamas, anti-American, Antifa and Arctic anarchist. Um, Of course, he got on all the tropes into his apology. It seems to be a theme to insult while you apologize. Um, But, you know, the congressman doesn't stand by himself here. Um, uh, You were kind enough, Tiffany, to pull up some sound from another Mississippian. Yeah. So this is this is my point, because to me, this is the danger and outrage. Right. So we get all outraged over this one video. And I have to say, like, just a shout out to this black woman who was facing that, because not only um, for those of you who are listening and not watching, not only is it this um, this this crowd of white men, there are also three police officers who are surrounding her, telling her to go back. Now, she did cross over the the brigade to get footage for social media. She wasn't breaking the law. They just set up, you know, a a random line and said, all right, protesters on this side, you guys on that side. She crossed over and was trying to get video. And all these men are making ape noises and threatening her. And the police officers are surrounding her and the grace that she had, the cool that she kept. So I want to acknowledge that. For sure. Uh, And I, I, you know, I kind of feel the same way. Like, you want to jump in my face and um, Dave Chappelle does something on this where he's like, somebody call me a digger. Like, I'm not so, you know, like, Mm. sweetheart, that ain't going to get me riled up. Like, you going to look the fool because I'm going to keep it right here. That is the one place where I say when when, uh, Forever Float is said, when they go uh, low, we go high. That is the one place. Like, you're not going to get me. The problem with focusing on this is let's look at Mike Collins as an individual. Let's look at his voting record. And then Mike Collins is not alone. Um, In uh, 2016, I believe, uh, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith, also from Mississippi, made this comment while she was on the campaign trail running against a black man. Take a listen. 2018. So forgive me, 2018. Take a listen. The Republican senator seen here wearing a Confederate Army cap at the home of Jefferson Davis. The caption, Mississippi history at its best. And there's a video of her joking with a supporter. So she was running against Mike Espy. Um, a, a, a statewide uh, election and made those comments. She's also um, not alone. We uh, y- y'all have heard enough about uh, that nutcase Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, she's also not alone. Paul Gosar. They uh, are two people who spoke at a far right. Um, uh, it was so much I had to literally print this out. They spoke at a far right American political action conference at a hotel in Orlando, Florida in 2022. This was an event organized by white nationalist activists. They spoke there. They are still in Congress. More than two dozen Republicans refused um to sign on to uh, a letter denouncing white supremacy. they All these Republicans sit on the House uh, Oversight and Accountability Committee. It's too many of them to read. Um, but uh, 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 Paul Gosar is also on that. Um, Lauren Boebert, some of your your famous yeah, um, deplorables. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Nancy Mace, Kelly Armstrong, Scott Perry, Andy Biggs, all those people. Um, Steve King, as I know who Angela remembers well. Mm-hmm. Steve King represented Iowa um, in Congress from 2003 to 2021, and he has a litany of comments um, that he made about. Um, being uh, about what white culture has done for this country. Yeah. Um, and I, I won't even repeat a lot of his words, but uh, this was my challenge also. And I know I don't like talking about him, but I'm going to make this point with Trump because people were saying, um, you know, how Donald Trump turned the party racist. And now we have a white supremacist in the White House. And I wanted to say where the... F-U-C-K, have y'all been? Yeah. Because this is nothing new. How many white supremacists have we had yeah. in this White House? The framers, with the exception of John Adams and John Quincy Adams, were all enslavers. Throughout history, we've had so many white supremacist presidents. Currently in Congress, there are dozens of white supremacists. 
countering them are well-intentioned white liberals who say things <laughs> like black kids don't even know what computers are so not that she's in Congress, sure, but you know sure. people who Your share that well right no. people who share that ideology people well-intentioned and we just don't know about well, the but the but policy because i've come, well. come oh, in contact with them yeah. right yeah, and sense. i have come in contact with well-intentioned white yeah. liberal people but not who, all it, of them are not all of yeah. them but in congress i've come across yeah, yeah. well-intentioned white people so sure. i'm speaking from experience and yeah. in interviewing and working with them that i do believe they're well-intentioned but they can still and you have worked with I think people as, as I've well intentioned and not so well intentioned right that's the only but point as I'm executive making. director of the Congressional Black Caucus you had to work across the aisle and you had to work with people who didn't look like you and you did it successfully so you, there are people you know who, who have good intentions and may get it wrong I'm just my point in this is if we make it all about Mike Collins yeah we miss the bigger we miss the bigger yeah. picture yeah. Yeah. and to all the people who are abstinent around this these are the people who will hold c- important committee assignments seats these are the people who will elevate in congress and have leadership roles control budgets and control policy so i just wanted to introduce that and remind folks it's nothing new i think that's uh uh, to underscore we're trying to say that these things are not monoliths you may hold up an example at any one particular point in time and say hey this is atrocious they did the quiet part out loud but hell at, at, at Baylor University I remember back during the big immigration debates when Bush was president they held a catch an illegal immigrant day mm-hmm. where the Republican Party students all wore orange jumpsuits jail looking suits and pretend and had illegal immigrant written across their front or across their back. Brian um, Kemp in his campaign video was riding around in a pickup truck and a gun hello. saying we know how to deal with uh, border crossers in hello. Georgia. Yeah. Hello. This is violence, xenophobia and racism, the holy trinity of Donald Trump's mega party. I mean it was Donald Trump who said that uh, about a different outcome in the, in the war. Uh, right? The, in unholy the, civil war. the unholy trinity. The unholy trinity. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but, but all this to say y'all is that these folks may be f- more front we're facing now, um, but this tenor has always been there. Hand, uh, um, uh, Hyde uh, Smith didn't reflect back to Trump. She went back to the Civil War in the home of Jefferson Davis. Right? Do. This is this is this is base for them. This is she base. also went to a segregated all white um, high school. And for anybody who wants to say, oh, it was a different time, she sent her daughter to a very similar school as well. Very She's a so. problem. Um, so y'all um, keep up. Watch out. I, I I will admit personally. I love to know who you are when you're racist. You know, when, Put it out when, there. When is your thing? See you. Just, Don't pretend. Just hey, let me know. I know how to deal with you. I, you know, we've coexisted for a long time in the yeah. part of the country where I live. Um, and an original thought, I just, this just came to me um, for all these people who are like, you know, um, Mike Collins included, like we're not racist. This just brilliant thought just came to me. It's not that I'm saying you're racist. The racists think you're racist. you're racist. It's not, not <laughs> my <laughs> familiar. Bra- so that familiar. is Andrew's quote. So Tiff, 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 I like it. Is, it I'm belongs, colonizing Andrew's look, She has <laughs> plagiarism as a hobby. I love it. It, it belongs to the ages. Borrowing we'll with no it. attribution whatsoever. We'll Gaslighting on who it belongs to. My original thought reminds me, me however your, possibly of another that's her conflict. piece to the to the her <laughs> valuable other piece conflict? it reminds me of another conflict coming up the kendrick drake and the third person who nobody knows is involved but you do well you know what screw it <laughs> <laughs> screw it There's been a lot in the news lately with regards to this Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. Angela, you stay attuned to all things Drake. Kendrick. And Kendrick. (laughs) Kendrick. (laughs) I think. What's um, the latest? Well, um, at the time of recording, what we know is that there was a drive by shooting outside of Drake's house. Um, One of the his security guards. In Toronto, right? Yes, in Toronto, one of his security guards um, was injured. And I think um, the thing that came um, forth to me really on Friday night, this past Friday night when I was listening to um, Drake's uh, diss track, no, Kendrick's diss track to um, about Drake, Meet the Grams, Mm -hmm. and Drake's response 
I was like, okay, I'm scared that we're going to be in the 90s hip hop beef of mm. Tupac and Biggie because they sounded so dark. Those songs sounded so dark. And so to me, I was like, God, please, like, don't let anybody get hurt. Like, and, and I think it's especially triggering not only for folks who grew up on the West Coast, but that were there at the time because Biggie and Pac were killed on the West Coast, um, of course, in Vegas and mm-hmm. L.A. And so... It's just one of those things where you're like, this was so fun. I was, you guys know, I was like pumped every time I was coming. I was like, yeah, yeah. you're the latest district. You know, it was it was in- incredible. Um, I still think Kendrick won for what it's worth, but I do think that it is notable that things can get violent quickly when yeah. you come at someone's family. Your own credibility is one thing, but when you tell someone like you wish they weren't alive or yeah. their parents wish they weren't alive or, you know, you're alleging things about someone's spouse or their fiance. And with your best friend, like it just it kind of can go too far. And we've seen it before. Um, this won't be uh, the first time, certainly, and maybe not the last. But I think the, the reality is it's important to keep things on the track. And mm-hmm. I think it can't be so personal that if the, your kids are listening to this, they're concerned. Mm-hmm. People in your community are listening to this and they're concerned. So what are the, the parameters yeah. <laughs> around well, beef so that they don't turn violent, I think is the most important I, thing. I haven't seen reporting on it that this shooting was related to the beef between them. The drive-by. I understand Wait. what you're saying. No, I'm at, but I'm asking. Like you're, you're probably. I, I, mean, the co- I understand, the but what we do know is, is there's a Google map with <laughs> his know, address on it. Not only that, but like saying that this is a house for a pedophile, a sex offender, you okay. know, lives here. So I, I'm not saying that. Um, and to Tiff's point on re- responsible journalism, that this is not. We don't have any proof or Causation. any evidence that there's. It is tied to the beef. It is ironically timed from a chronological standpoint. Sure. Yeah. That this would have happened around then. And what I'm saying is even if they in, as individuals were not related to, to it or did anything to perpetrate this or their camps or their friends, we know even back in the day there were people hot enough to right. get violent right. yeah. around the Biggie and Pop who, beef, who were fighting each other. There was an yeah. East Coast, West sure. Coast. West Coast beef, beef yeah. you know, and so that's what I'm saying that we know that it, it has I a tendency to go there. And then something else I don't know, which I don't want to put anybody on spot because you guys may not know. I was, when I didn't realize this happened in Toronto, and I was immediately curious, what are the gun laws in Toronto? Yeah, <laughs> you I know, don't know, like because a, a drive by yeah. shooting, you know, so all of those things. Anyway, um, and I forgot about the Google Map. You know, that yeah. that was the, the cover, which at the time I thought that's a gangster ass move. But yeah. to, to your point, if they but can make. So now it's a gangster ass move that happened. And if they can make that connection, then what um, legal liability does Kendrick have in this, if any? If they say, well, we knew about this because you made this his, his map. This was not in America. This was in Canada. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like this could Other turn into like yeah. an international issue um, real quick. Um, we, we started from the bottom and now we're here. I'm so telling you. Right. Know? Literally. Um, to your point about the, the violence, uh, I think hip hop has been violent. Um, That's true. Yeah. For, for a while now. And it's... Uh, I, I I think even before we got to this point, some of the things they were saying um, were a bit below bar. Yeah. And I don't want to step on any of our um, colleagues or friends' toes because we have some brilliant women who we're friends with who I think will be writing about this. Um, but the undertone of making women kind of the butt of their joke, you know, mm-hmm. and abusing women and you know you're a pedophile and like all of those things and it's like if this is true between these two like how prevalent is this kind of behavior um in entertainment i don't want to just put this in hip-hop in entertainment we've seen several cases where there's issues around inappropriate behavior and ill treatment of women out here that to me is concerning and we have to start to address this misogyny in in a different Mm -hmm. way um, because that's also costing lives and livelihood Mm -hmm. and you know mental health issues etc so yeah I agree it was kind of fun at first and I I agree with you Kendrick won but in the end we all lose if we end up losing more black bodies off of of a a, a hip hop beef and if we are um you know, making women the bullets that were shooting at each other and mm-hmm. girls the bullets like that the were props. shooting at each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, I think one thing that was, it was funny at the time, um, but now it is like ringing true. You know, I was saying um, that I felt, oh, you know what? Andrew, to Andrew's point, I had to go back several tracks, but to Andrew's point, I'm going to give him some credit on this. The third party involved was J. Cole. 
because yeah. because J. Cole said, at, um, you know what? My bad, man. Kendrick is my friend. I don't even need to be in this diss. And people have been saying, no, the real winner is J. Cole because he's out here like Sound he's protected business. his whole piece. So I want to say publicly apologize to my Why? brother who at the start of the show was like in the third person. We like, who the third person is? Jesus. Jesus yeah. is also known as J. Cole, apparently, yeah. because I he pro- J- another J. C. Yeah. J. Cole and Jesus Christ, nah, right? He nah. said he going to hold on to protect his peace. The Lord will fight his battles. He is done with these diss I records. I like the memes around him when they're mm-hmm. sending like the J. Cole memes and mm-hmm. it's like if I send you this it means I'm making a sound business decision. Right? <laughs> like, I, like I appreciate that. that. I yeah. appreciate that. I think a yeah. lot of folks get turned on to it because of just the lyrical you yeah. know mm-hmm. from, from a lyrical standpoint you know hearing this kind of back and forth that didn't sound studio, that didn't sound like it was, you know, um, pop rap, you know, yeah, yeah. workshopped through Respect. some, he has a some com- yeah. entity. I, I, and rap. there's For something sure. about that, you know. I think that's losing. first of all, that's not that's that can't be missing in this beef. The fact that he's basically trumping oh, this guy up to be some just kind of manufactured Manchurian, you know. But we've all to me, we, that's not new. Like we, no. even his song started from the bottom. Now we're here. It's like, but you were what a Disney bottom kid. did you hit? Yeah, right. what bottom did you really yeah. have? I mean, and even in his diss track, I thought the use of AI, um, I, that is the problem with hip hop. Yes. You know, like people yeah. are saying yeah. that is, yeah. it's, it's not authentic mechanic, anymore. Yeah. And immediately when I heard it, I was like, did he get permission from Tupac's estate, which yeah. he's now being sued by? And I'm like, Snoop, take is, it down. Snoop is alive. Like, yeah. why are we using AI for Snoop? Like, Snoop, Snoop got up. He said, I'm going back to bed. He yeah. was like, I'm not doing with this. But, yes, but, why did, but why use his AI when he's like, well, you could have asked Snoop to be on the dish. Or maybe he did and Snoop said no, which I think gets into a whole conversation around Acting using like your... like a colonizer. That and using uh, somebody's likeness. If somebody yes. took what Angela said today yeah. and put that... You know, on like a, how on a you track. Do these quotes. How I, how voice, I, how I steal, <laughs> how I steal y'all's words. You say it better than me, so. I'm well, pissed. I asked Nick to lay over Angela's words, what she said about the NBA, and he didn't do it. And oh, the thing, it looked like Angela saying She it. was trying to I, Drake me. I, I was trying that. to Drake. <laughs> if I send you, if I send you Drake, that means I'm stealing your words. <laughs> Lord, Lord, and the beef now has expanded now to include. Now Tip is gonna be on Drake's Tiffany Instagram stories. No cross. commentary. He's just gonna be posting your face, That's and everybody's gonna C. know you're the next target. And Kendrick won. Tip Drake cross, lost. cross Drake. I, but God. I hope at this point it can be done. Like I can't even keep up with these districts. I'm like, let oh, the no, district breathe. Yeah, like definitely Euphoria should. was Euphoria was, 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 was amazing. Classic. And then he's he's not like us. Like I was like, I can't even keep up, you guys. So like let us breathe. We and, don't like, wanna hear you say it. nigga no, no more. more. Yeah. So so as y'all and were talking was about like, I'm the biggest hater. I hate the way you look. I hate the way you talk. Yeah, I hate yeah. the way you dress. Like I thought all of that was such a, a gangster thing to say. But again, hip hop. We don't need it too gangster though. Too right. And I I legit forgot forgot about the Google Maps point. So I, I will be curious to see where this goes. I mean, I think, I, well, and they I'm not curious. I, I really hope quickly, that it goes nowhere. Have they caught the yeah. drive-by shooter? I don't, I don't see like, any yeah. evidence of that here. Okay. I, I would just say, I think the, the, the danger here obviously is while these folks are operating at a whole nother level, these artists, the people who may be taking license and permission and taking steps that they believe would be sanctioned by these guys who they may be idolizing and yeah. feel like they're doing, you know, um, justice to or by by doing something like a drive by. De- there, therein lies the danger. While these guys may have no intention of ever, yeah, you know, throwing blows, right, or worse, no intention of that because that's not who they are. Their words may have given license, and I felt the same way when you all were talking about some of the. Just some of the, you know, the hegemony and the, the the sexism and the way in which women are, you know, made as props rather than, um, um, you know, the peacemakers that oftentimes our sisters show up as in the community or leave them out and deal with your own uh, uh, your own self esteem issues without regard to that. The, the the problem with even that is that it gives license to a whole community of people who are following, who are listening, that this is okay, that this mm-hmm. is acceptable, that that you rap like this and yeah, the world still celebrates you and you're yeah. still welcomed in the mainstream spaces. 
that's, I think, part of the danger to this. But we have been here before. Let's just hope we've learned the right lessons so that we don't repeat them. Can I just say one thing? Um, I, speaking of not using people as props, this security guard is in serious condition at the time of recording. So we he want- got shot. Yes, I, I didn't say that. Gu- I thought I said yeah, he got yeah, shot. I thought it was a drive-by shooting. I didn't realize secu- he- Drake's security guard got I shot. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he's in yeah. serious condition. So we just want to send serious. prayers to his family. Yeah. Um, and I think you know the other thing that we just want to remember is that. Hip hop, like for many of us, it was a first love. And I want to make sure it's always something that we look fondly upon um, and not sad when things like this happen. Yeah, this is devastating. yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, I would like us to have a conversation if we can, whenever. Um, um, this is my original idea oh about Lord. <laughs> who can use the N word. <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you for that yeah. remarkable idea, Tiffany. That was Angela's idea. When I post a picture of Christopher Columbus, no, Tiffany stole my oh, shit. At least, at least make me Drake. <laughs> no. Lord. Okay. That, that is. No. That Angela, is. They yes. are the same. Same. They are the same. Anyway, and no, Angela had this idea the beef has expanded, because uh, of that, to include that beef. Now, Angela and I think we should Bride. talk about it. So anyway, on a future episode, we're, we're going to talk about that because I think that's interesting. The but it was Angela's now idea. includes Kendrick Lamar, Drake, the colonizer, Angela Rye. Ooh, and now it includes you. I think you I just dropped it in. <laughs> you now you in the, I'm gonna 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 be, by the time those words. this podcast is over, Drake gonna drop a diss track <laughs> with Angela's voice as AI. Scratch. That was a scratch. <laughs> a that was a scratch. Team. That's so mean. Well, guess what, y'all? We are about what to wrap y'all? this show, but not before we share with you a little surprise that I just saw walk in the building. Stay tuned. What? what? For, okay, uh, surprises walking right? in the building. For a surprise guest coming up. Okay. We'll be right back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome home. Merlin, welcome home. We have a star in the building. Uh, oh. Someone who I am certain expresses great gratitude to y'all for the way you have mm-hmm. stood in the gap. But y'all, on this moment, we want to express our gratitude to you, the Marilyn Mosby. Yeah. Yes. A brilliant Mosby. sister, yeah. prosecutor, yeah. mother, loving family member, and someone who cares so deeply about our community that she put it all on the line. When she was in position to do something different, uh, she did. Um, and we can't say that always about mm-hmm. folks who we elevate into places that we want to see change. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Marilyn's case, she was doing the difficult work of decriminalization and of looking at the rate at which black men were being prosecuted and for what reasons for, I would say, being the tip of the spear and prosecuting law enforcement officers, yes, which in this country was was just not in the realm of possibility for most of us to conceive of, of law enforcement being held accountable for illegal actions mm-hmm. taken while wearing the badge, right? And we know that what Maryland attempted to do there isn't the first time that we've seen this exhibited. It just happens to be the first time we saw some accountability come in their direction. And um, some might want to separate that from the harrowing journey that she has been through. Um, But I am a firm believer that this harrowing experience of late is the direct result of your courage unapologetic leadership, um, belief that you didn't need validation from who came before you by way of folks in that office, but rather you had the moral strength, courage, and fiber to stand for what was right when it was right. And for that, we thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Oh, my goodness. I appreciate that so much. And I'm just honored to be sitting with three dynamic individuals who have had such an influence on on this country okay i'm good um you are giving me my accolades but i have to give each of you your accolades not only do you have the most informative intriguing Mm -hmm. insightful (laughs) podcast that exists right (laughs) but you all have been courageous in your careers using your platform to talk about the issues that matter the most to not just one segment of our community, but to everybody. And so, you know, fighting for the ideals of justice, democracy, and freedom 
that's what you guys do each and every day. And mm. I'm so incredibly honored to even be sitting oh, come on, among man. these legends right here. So thank you. We love I you, Marilyn. And I appreciate there are names you. that we don't know, faces you won't recognize who share that same love and compassion yeah, for I appreciate you. It. Absolutely. I appreciate Can it. I, I just want to say quickly to Andrew's point, to what your career meant uh, and means, but what it meant at the time when you yeah. rose to national fame, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand the role always of a prosecutor. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as black women, especially, we can be put in these like uncomfortable positions. But the role of a prosecutor is so important because you decide um, who to charge, what charges to bring, who not to charge. Uh, I had you on what um, sentence recommendations to make. That's absolutely. Right. If and somebody gets on, into the system at all. right? A- absolutely. Right. And I had you on my show when you decided mm-hmm. to not prosecute low level crimes, which, you know, bottleneck the, the justice system and right. unnecessarily push is people who look like us into a very unforgiving mm-hmm. criminal justice system that wasn't always talked about um, in the national media. And when the media started covering police brutality, it wasn't new. And a lot of people were like, right. what? This is happening? Like, we were old enough to remember Rodney King. That just mm-hmm. happened to be the one that we caught on camera. When these smartphones started giving us a, a better up-close personal view of the type of uh, brutality that many people face, um, then all of a sudden there was coverage of um, how to prosecute these police officers. When that coverage started happening, black women rose, because this is an mm-hmm. elected position, black women rose to assume these positions. So for all the people who think, you know, politics don't matter, elections don't yeah. matter, Marilyn was elected. Kim right. Fox was elected. That's the right. woman in Florida, I forget her name. Aaron Ms. Ayala. Thank Morning you. Quirrell. Thank you. Yes, Thank all you. these women were elected. Vice President Kamala Harris, mm-hmm. a, a mentor of yours, mm-hmm. elected. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think that you have carried on an amazing um, tradition of truth, righteousness, and justice that we don't always feel like we're a part of. Um, no matter how they try to make us feel, this is our home that our ancestors built. And so your uh, role cast a wide net of influence across this country. And um, we say thank you endlessly. Angela has really, you know, she, I, rem- I still have this screenshot when Angela said, have you guys heard about what's yeah. happening with Marilyn Mosby? Yeah. Yeah. And it took off from there. And she... Angela, I'm always telling her, like, get some sleep, get some rest. Like, she is, like, pressing the gas. Yeah. Angela, I'm going to say this. Please don't let Angela interrupt me, friend. <laughs> <laughs> you <Interrupted>. said. No. <laughs> Angela, um, a lot of people are want to be um, helpful because what's, um, what's happening is not fair. But Angela spearheaded this entire, um, you know, thing and just asked, just said. It, it wasn't a tough ask. It was like, you guys, look at what's happening. Right. And we were all like, what the F? Yeah. Like, this is insane. Yeah. And people overwhelmingly volunteer, raise their hands like, Angela, tell us what we need to do. What, how can we help? Right. Um, and then people started their own, you know, campaigns and, and trying to help. And so we you are not alone. We stand with you. I and I think people that. just want to know, how are you feeling? How are yeah. you doing? So, again, like I am so grateful. I'm filled with nothing but gratitude. Um, and, you know, I've been at my lowest going mm-hmm. through this ordeal, um, fighting with the federal government. Um, For the past four years, they've Mm. combed every aspect of my life, my taxes, my campaign Mm. finances, my charitable donations. They were interviewing my neighbors, my friends, my family, FBI, going unannounced and knocking on people's doors at five o'clock in the morning to interrogate them, sending subpoenas to black churches right before my election. So the type of isolation Mm. that I've felt is something that I've never felt in my Mm. life, Mm. Um, you know. Being in that role, understanding the importance of, of a prosecutor, my, my, your mission, and this is something that like resonated with me at my core, is justice over convictions, right? And, and so I felt like my job was always the pursuit of justice, I, doing the right thing. I don't, in the face of adversity or challenge, I don't care. It's the right thing. And, and, and I tell this story only because I, I'm going to bring it back to Angela, but The most sobering moment for me is I put it all on the line Mm -hmm. and I get it like Mm -hmm. prosecuting police officers. It wasn't happening in this country. Mm -hmm. Right. That that accountability led to exposure. The the federal government came in, exposed the discriminatory policing practices of the eighth largest police department in the country. That exposure ultimately led to reform. Right. right. The, The reform, the consent decree, the the actual reforms that were put into place that we I my office put out in 2016 that were not just adopted statewide and in the city of Baltimore, but nationally. Mm-hmm. Right. 
we That's prosecuted right. successfully as a result of that case, Freddie Gray, in, in 2015, when, when I dropped the cases in 2016. After that, we learned our lessons, right? We successfully prosecuted 33 police officers that were violating the rights of citizens in Baltimore City. We had so many different programs. We touched more than 20,000 young people and ensuring we were getting the young people before they got to the criminal justice system. The Conviction Integrity Unit, which was the first in the state of Maryland that did reinvestigations into claims of actual innocence, right? Where I had 13 innocent black men that together served 300 years combined in prison for crimes they didn't commit. Mm. We had a, a unit for sentencing review where we modified mm. the sentence of the elderly prison population, the juvenile lifers. So I fully understood, mm. I fully understood that reducing the prison population, mm -hmm. right? And 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 this helping deplete and and negate this this national prison industrial complex that is built off the backs of black and brown people, mm -hmm. that the, the status quo would come for me. Mm -hmm. But what I did not anticipate, mm -hmm. I did not anticipate, was turning around in that courtroom and the most sobering moment was for me to turn around and know him and be there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I talked about this before, I prayed on it, I prayed on it, and, and God, I realized that this crucible made me wiser, stronger, and my faith is more empowered in God. Mm -hmm. And what I realized, I was never alone. That's mm -hmm. right. I was never alone. So walking out of that courtroom when I was found guilty, which is unbelievable for taking my own retirement course, savings, course, mm -hmm. right? When 739 people in the city of Baltimore, 35,000 in the entire country did the exact same thing. And I'm the only person in America to, to be prosecuted now facing 40 years in prison. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I knew they were going to come for me. I just did not anticipate that I was going to be isolated in that way. And so it was a, a groundswell of individuals locally that, you know, were like, you're not by yourself. But the first thing that I said when I got into the car, how you feel? I feel blessed. Mm -hmm. I feel blessed. And I prayed on it. And the people that I, I love the most and I talked about this recently too, right? That, that I, I unconditionally love showed me the conditions of their love, and mm -hmm. and I'm I'm looking around like people mm -hmm. whispering, "I got your back." Well, you must be way back, cause I don't see yeah. nobody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I prayed on it, and God sent perfect strangers into my life, mm -hmm. and people who I loved and admired from afar, mm -hmm. like Angela Rye, mm -hmm. who came into my life and was like, "Sis, what is going on?" Yeah. Send me the trial transcripts. Yeah. What what she as, as soon as I spoke to this woman, she got it. Mm -hmm. She made the connections right away. And I felt for the first time I was being heard. My, my. I was so emotional speaking to her because for I can tell you 800 and like I think it's 869 days. I wasn't being heard. Mm -hmm. And so I am forever grateful for this champion right here that understood that this was so much greater than That's me real. individually. This is about what I represent to so many others. It's about Monique, Monique Worrell. It's about Kim Fox. It's about mm -hmm. Aaron Misael. It's about Kim Gardner. It's about mm -hmm. Rachel Rollins. It's about mm -hmm. an administration that has been targeting black women because even 60 years after Malcolm X said it, the most unprotected, neglected, and disrespected person in America is still the black woman. Mm -hmm. And it was this black woman that stood up for me and I'm forever and eternally grateful mm -hmm. for. You know who is also about Vice President Kamala Harris? In many ways, you and your policies are her offspring. And I just have to go out and say, um, we owe the people who came before us a debt. They owe you a debt. Are you going to protect your legacy or not? And if you, the, the easiest way to lose power is to not realize the power you have. Yeah, yeah. And in an election year, I would dare this campaign to take any voting block for granted. And so to me, this seems like an easy layup um, that this is her legacy. And I hope that this reaches everyone it needs to reach. If you have not signed the petition, I was asking Angela, like, what's going on with the petition? Um, a lot of you guys signatures at the time of this recording, but we need 20,000, 100,000. What a people are doing, they're liking the post. Angela was telling me they're sharing the post, but not signing the petition. Sign the petition, please. Send it to your friends. Ask your family. Don't just like the post. Don't just share it. This is what goes beyond hashtag activism. This is when you actually have to do very little. But so something. nobody has, but something. Right. And for all the people out there who, you know, will come to Angela and say, you know, I want to do what you do. 
a heavy is the crown for the person who mm-hmm. wears it. Angela does not take, you know, the the notoriety that she has and walk carpets and be done with it. It's like she was up until uh, much to my dismay. She was up till two in the morning <laughs> last night doing stuff. When she wanted to look in this case, she combed through the transcript. She was here when we did this podcast. Y'all can see it. Go back and look. She had mm-hmm. a tablet full of notes. She was going through it. That is the work that is required of all of us. This is the rent that we pay for a living. This is the debt that we owe to the people who did it before us. So participate in this. And yeah. imagine if you were in Marilyn's position, what would you want someone to do for you? And to that point, I want to make sure that we acknowledge the people that are doing that for you. Yes, yes, um, yes. You know, I've been watching Andrew sit next to you. Andrew was targeted by the federal yes, government as well. I want to make sh- make it clear that this was a Trump administration effort. Andrew experienced the same thing. They tried to get him caught up multiple times and ended up alleging money laundering from his campaign finance account. Anybody that's ever run a campaign, even down to the local level, know you're not touching those bank accounts. Um, but I'm watching Andrew empathize with what you're saying, understanding what you're saying and feeling what you're saying because he's been through it. But I do just want to acknowledge there are a lot of people that never turn their backs on Mm y'all and are grateful for your leadership because you give us hope that our votes matter. Mm -hmm. And when we vote people in who think like us, who represent our best interests, policy can change. Mm -hmm. This world can change. Things can change. And so I want to shout out Win With Black Women, which is yes, um, run yes, by Jotaka yes, Edie, yes. um, Holly Holiday, um, so many others. Monique Presley, who mm-hmm. stepped in, yes. like, mm-hmm. what, what we doing? Where are we going? Ben Crump, for both of y'all. Mm-hmm. I, t- I was yelling, calling Ben's phone, blowing up for both of y'all. <laughs> yes. um, Tiffany, like, yes, this one Tiffany. right here, media strategist yes. extraordinaire, tough yes. questions. This, she was bl- blasting my ass earlier today. I can't remember <laughs> about what, but trying to get me together. All the detail. All the details. Like, what are you doing? I think the other thing is I would really offer three calls to action for folks um, and for all of the Fox News-ish reports that are coming out saying Marilyn is out here seeking her own pardon. There are 20,000 people now standing right beside Hello. her and behind her. And she asked for, for none of this. Hello. She did not. She did Angela not. Angela jumped in and did this. But the petition yeah. is to request President Biden issue a full pardon to Marilyn Mosby. Um, if you haven't signed the petition yet, please do that. You can also call the White House. I'm pulling up the number. It's yes. 202-456-1111. Again, that's 202-456-1111. I think they just need to know what's happening and why it's so important to review cases when you come into a new administration. Sure, you want an independent Department of Justice, but you didn't come in with an independent uh, Department of Justice. You came in at a deficit. So review those cases. The last thing that I would say is on May 23rd, um, Marilyn, you um, are scheduled to be sentenced. Um, you're facing 40 years in prison. And I think more than anything else, you've not said this, but what I'm saying is I would like to, for that black judge, that black woman judge, to look out. Do I, do I want me to say her name? Can we? Sure. Her name is Lydia K. Grigsby. Um, you know, this black woman judge, I want her to see a sea of multiculturalism. All of the people who said... Um, justice for Marilyn Mosby is justice for me. And so I'm coming um, to uh, Greenbelt um, at 10.30 a.m. on May 23rd. You did not make that request. I did. Right. Um, we'll put it on socials. And Angela won't be alone. There will be other people in that courtroom for the sentencing. And unsolicited, just so this, this judge knows, this administration knows, um, our, our brother Demario Solomon Simmons reached out yesterday and was like, hey, I have more lawyers who want to sign on to the petition. What do we do? Sign on to the pardon application. Sign, I'm it's sorry, the pardon, application. On the pardon application. 50 lawyers she got on the pardon. 50 people representing her on the pardon application. And mm-hmm. how can people find the petition to sign it? So you can go to Justice for Marilyn Mosby. Dot com justice for Marilyn Mosby.com. If you still didn't get that, you can type in organize for Marilyn um, in a Google search and it'll take you right to this color change petition. Oh, one other thing that's really important at the time of recording, um, a civil rights organization letter went to the White House um, asking Joe Biden to pardon Marilyn Mosby as well. Um, and in that letter, NAACP, National Urban League, National Action Network, Color of Change, Until Freedom. Melanie. Uh, yes, NCBCP, National Coalition for Black Civic Participation, oh, Black Women's Roundtable, Black Voters Matter, a ton of our organizations. So this isn't some favor we're calling on. We see justice delayed, but we will not see justice denied. 
That's real. And y'all, I know we ran <clears throat> a bit a bit long today, but I know you agree with us that it was well worth uh, the added time. Marilyn, you have any parting Yeah, words? I was going to say, Marilyn. Um, she was going to make me emotional. She wanted to come here. She was like, I want to come see y'all. She wanted to I just watch. Yeah. She wanted to watch. And we were like, uh, no, nah, we're not about to have you in the you building in, right? watching. <laughs> no, I, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really believe, you know, I prayed on it. And I said it before, but I believe that God sends earth angels into Amen. your life. And that's what you Amen. all have been for me. Amen. So thank you. Thank well, you, were, you were that for us first. Yeah. How about absolutely. that? Yeah. Um, I have been um, what we call draking all day, oh, stealing words. And so I just had another original thought. Oh, um, draking. Okay. From okay. The unnamed. <laughs> A brilliant woman said this um, some years ago. And I think uh, these words deserve to be echoed right here and that is our time is now yes you know that was my first slogan when i when i ran for office that's why she's trying to Divine. pretend like she I stole it. it oh i love it <laughs> no, in my head. <laughs> like who's that Divine. really a woman <laughs> hey man Aww. what a great way to close out y'all let's take some action I hope you've enjoyed this conversation i certainly have um but the weight of this moment is not lost on me uh, and the weight uh, that Marilyn, despite her brave face and courage, which is which is not manufactured, is real. Um, um, uh, for those of us who are believers, uh, who even acknowledge Mother Earth, the universe, the energy, mm -hmm. in whatever way in which you acknowledge, just lift it up because all things are possible. And um, um, and we've got to make this thing possible. We don't need to. This is not a time for demurring, but rather a time for standing up. All right. Thanks for listening. Remember to rate, review, subscribe, and tune in to our regular episodes dropped every Thursday. Welcome home, y'all. Welcome home. There are 179 days until election. Thank you for joining the natives. Intentional with the info on all of the latest. Rod Gillum and Cross connected to the statements that you leave on our socials. Thank you sincerely for the patience. Reason for your choice is clear. We're so grateful. We took the oath to execute roles. Yeah, faithful. Preserve, defend, and protect the truth. Even if painful. Welcome home to all of the natives. We thank you. Welcome home, y'all. What's up, sis? Native Land Pod is a production of iHeartRadio in partnership with Reasoned Choice Media. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.